in the news this week. The new Home Secretary demands police officers record more non-crime hate incidents. The Law Society of Scotland raises serious concerns over Liam MacArthur's assisted suicide bill. And a mother shares how she refused to abort her baby when it was given a 1% chance of survival. Hello. New Home Secretary Yvette Cooper is to increase the burden on police officers to keep records of hate incidents which do not constitute criminal offences. This is a reversal of the previous government's policy, where last year the police were told not to interfere with a person's freedom of expression and only record an incident if the event presents a real risk of either significant harm or a future criminal offence. A Home Office source said the move was necessary in response to anti-Semitism and Islamophobia and said recording data even where no crime has been committed is proportionate and necessary. The Christian Institute's Kieran Kelly said the move is just the latest in a series of measures which will harm free speech. The prospect of new zero tolerance hate crime measures being taken should cause concern for anyone who values and cares about free speech. Let's not forget this comes hot on the heels of the scrapping of the Higher Education Freedom of Speech Act, it comes alongside calls to toughen up the uh, 2023 Online Safety Act. And there was a reason that the previous government uh, drew up new guidance alongside the College of Policing to deal with non-crime hate incidents because far too many people were being written up by the police, having the details kept on a permanent record which was going to show up in DBS and employment checks and sometimes for the most trivial of reasons. Um, now hopefully we can all agree that hating others is wrong but the previous attempts to properly define hatred have proven both elusive and divisive. You just need to take a look at the uh, Hate and Public Order Act in Scotland. You know, these kind of restrictions can come at an immense cost to freedom and don't deliver the benefits that are claimed for them. This whole idea that something must be done is not a sound basis for clamping down on freedom of speech. The Law Society of Scotland has highlighted serious issues with Liam MacArthur's assisted dying bill, saying it is not fit for purpose. The society, which represents over 13,000 solicitors, made the comments in its response to the Scottish Health Committee's call for evidence. The regulator does not adopt a position on the moral and ethical issues of assisted suicide, but was nevertheless highly critical of many aspects of the bill, including its broadly drawn definition of terminal illness and the inadequate protections for conscientious objectors. The Society's Elaine Cool also expressed concern over the timescale for assessing the impact of the legislation if it becomes law. We note that the bill would require review after five years, which in our view is far too long a period. Given the gravity and impact of the subject matter, it is imperative that the legislation can be updated in response to issues which come to light as soon as possible after it passes. Northern Ireland has followed the rest of the UK in instituting a temporary ban on puberty blockers for gender-confused children. Until the 26th of November, young people are now protected from obtaining the drugs via prescriptions from the UK and mainland Europe. Before the NI Department of Health acted, a potential loophole could have been exploited which would have allowed young people to access the drugs in Northern Ireland. The department made the decision in light of the CAS Review's findings that there is limited evidence to support the safe use of puberty blockers for children. Former First Minister Arlene Foster commented, The protection of children must always come first regardless of where they live in the UK. And finally, a mother in the US state of Ohio has shared how she rejected an abortion after her baby was given just a 1% chance of survival. Deanna Payne was informed of complications at a 17-week scan and told she could abort her baby given the potential health risks to her and the baby's per prognosis. After she and husband Chris received the devastating news, Deanna recalled, We just spent 45 minutes watching our son on an ultrasound, scared, unsure of the future. We heard the heartbeat and we just weren't okay with terminating the pregnancy. She spent two months being observed in hospital and was thankful for the nurses that helped her through the ordeal. These ladies helped me make it through 60 long emotional days where we didn't know what the outcome was going to be. Five years on, her son is now thriving with no adverse health effects. Well, that's all for this week. For regular updates and information on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.